part four of technique school here. Uh, we're gonna go through our upper body stuff. So before we get into any barbell movements, um, you know, one thing we talk about here is owning our body weight, right? So before we ever pick up a bar, there's two main movements that we're gonna say that we need to be able to achieve. What are those two movements? Perfect push up. Push up. A perfect push up. Yeah, a guy, a guy has no business putting a bar in his hand, bench pressing until he can do a push up. Don't ever forget that. Um, and then what's the other, what's the other side of the, of the spectrum we need to worry about? Chin up. Okay, so pretty simple. So those are the first two things we're going to talk about. Um, so, Coach Owens, why don't you get in a push-up position? Okay, let's go through our first push-up. All right, so y'all can just tell me tell me what we're looking for. We're talking perfect push-up here. That their arms are tucked in, and that their body moves as a unit, so they go up and down. And screw those palms in. That's the first thing we want to do. Why do we want to screw the palms in? Okay, so that's a big thing. It helps create torque, right? Why is torque important? Torque is important because if you don't have torque, you'll lose everything tight. What is torque? We always say torque. I don't think we ever talk about what is torque. Torque is the forces all like and twisting and everything, right? Another word for twisting is rotation. Okay, torque is rotationary force. So more or less the way that I look at it or like to explain it is why would we not use more force production that we can use? Um, and then at the same time, it, it's from a, from a joint health standpoint, we want to create torque because we want to keep the shoulder caps in a good position to produce and absorb the force we're asking it to produce. So yes, absolutely, torque is what we're talking about. So Coach Owens, face the camera here just so they can see this. All right, so what we're talking about is our position we want to use is like just how Coach has done. So we want the wrist right out in front of the shoulder, right? So this is our position, especially in our sport. All right, we're very close grip when we strike. So we want to train there. Um, so when we talk about core, uh, uh, torque, what coach is going to do is figuratively he's trying to twist his pinkies outside. So he's got two dinner plates trying to rotate outside, and that'll tuck the humerus into the shoulder capsule, and that'll help keep him tight. All right. When we're doing a push-up here, we talk about creating torque so we can close this gap between the tricep and the lat. Right. So when we're doing our perfect push-ups, theoretically, if I were to put a towel in between his lats and his triceps, it should sit there, right? It shouldn't fall out. So if, if he opens up that elbow, what's he losing? Cool. Yeah. He's losing torque, so we're losing some force. So we talk about bleeding force in wrong directions. That's where we're going to be losing force. Um, so we want to we want to make sure that we have torque. We make sure that, that gap is closed. So coach is getting a push-up position here. Folks, tell me about when we talk about neutral posture, down a neutral spine, how that applies to our push-up. It should be your back should be parallel to where you should have a high butt. Head should be in a neutral position. Everything should be locked in. The scalp should be nice and locked in. The core should be tight. The butt should be squeezed. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So the biggest visual I like when we talk about is we want a straight line through the spine, okay, all the way through the top of the head. So if I were to set this PVC pipe on top of Coach Owens, that thing should be straight from the time he starts to the time he ends the push-up. Okay. So we're going to go down to the bottom position here. Coach is going to touch the tip of his nose to the ground. Okay. And same thing. So here I want his butt down just a hair, okay, right there, and we're pretty square. And then back up the same way he came, and that picture stays square. Um, so we're going to try to keep this posture neutral, like I said, from the pelvis up into the shoulder, all the way to the top of the head. Go ahead and relax for a second, Coach. All right, stand up. Face this way. All right, so the other way, sorry. So the second thing that, that's, that's really important that um, we don't talk about a lot, and really when I went to go see Louis Simmons for the first time, um, you know, he, he, uh, he asked me a question, or he asked me a question about the upper back or, or you know, what, 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 uh, what are your main muscle movers when you bench press? And, you know, I said, the pecs, the triceps, and he said, wrong. And I said, wrong. And he said, the upper back is a trampoline for a big bench press. I repeat that. He said, the upper back is a trampoline for the bench press, which I, and before that point, I never, ever thought of it like that at all. Um, and really from that day, that was four years ago now, from that day, that's when we really started taking upper back training seriously. Um, not just from obviously increasing your bench press standpoint, but from a shoulder health standpoint. So that's really when we started all of our shoulders, all of our uh, upper back stuff that we do. If you guys ever wonder why we do so much of it, that's why. Okay? So when we first implemented that, just the scap pull part, ISTs wide, the face pulls, the chest pulls, the Blackburns, the Bradfords, the behind the neck, all that stuff, our bench went through the freaking roof. 
mean, our average guy increased his bench press like 30 pounds over the summertime. So when we talk about that, uh, what we want to do is, is what's our coach do with our scabs? Okay, down and back. So we say, you know, put your, we either really talk about taking your scabs and put, tucking them down in your hip pocket or in, in your pocket. So if you had jeans on, think about putting them, putting them in your pocket. Or we talk about it bringing it kind of down. We want to compress the spine. Everything, every muscle we have in our back, we want it to tighten and compress around the spine. Why, why do we want to tuck the scaps down? Why, why can't they just come back? Or why can't we go up and then tuck them back? Why do we have to go down and back? For stability. In what way? To, in what way for stability? When you said what, what, down? What is muscularly, what does that do when the scaps go down? Why is it so essential that we pull them actually down? It's tightening everything. It's bringing the rhomboids and all that and the traps together and tightening your back so it helps support everything. More or less. So if, if we're up top, that's going to cause a lot of trap activation. If traps are overactive, we're going to have underactive upper back in general. Okay? So when we tuck back and down, that's what really allows us to lock your upper back in and get you ready to press. Um, and really, like I said, really you guys are right, really protect the shoulder. But that's, that's really the most important thing that a lot of people – don't understand if his coach is doing scap pull aparts and he's up in his traps and his scaps are back, but they're up and back. Okay, when he's pulling apart, he's just going to be activating trap and we're not even using the muscles we want to use. So it's essential that we tuck those things back and down and then we work scap pull aparts or whatever upper back you're training, whether it's down the row, whatever it may be. It's absolutely essential that we stay out of these traps. What we're trying to do is, is, is help out shoulder health. Okay, mm -hmm. so as you guys know with the push up, um, here at Akron, you're not even allowed to put a bar in your hand if you're a, we have, we separated for mids, bigs, and skills. Um, but for you guys listening, our, our skills aren't allowed to touch a bar until they can do three sets of 30 bodyweight push-ups, perfect push-ups. Um, our mids, until they can do three sets of 25. And our bigs, until they can do three sets of 20. So that's our, our routine here. Before a guy's allowed to bench press this university, he has to own his body weight. Um, and we obviously, that's why we program what we do so that they can progressively increase those push-ups. Um, but that, you know, when we talk about owning your body weight, if you can't do body weight exercises, why should you be doing, we're just putting them in a bad position. Um, Cause I said, obviously if they can't do a push-up with their body weight, then it tells me that they're not ready to safely put a bar in their hand and they're gonna be able to keep their scaps set. Um, so that's a big, a big thing for us. So that's our perfect push-up, all right? Um, questions or anything that we, miss on on that you good there anything you think Harris that we miss there coaching the perfect push-up um just a common errors when we talk about creating torque you'll see a lot of guys when they, they they'll actually literally rotate their hand out yeah and they keep yeah that so in. When, we, yeah, when we talk about creating torque it's just you know like sometimes you'll see guys literally turn their thumbs over and that's not creating torque that's just shifting your your position you want to you want to theoretically like you know you want them to figuratively like they're trying to twist their pinkies out but they're not they're going to be drilled in the ground so you're not going to actually see a ton of movement you'll see a little bit of a shift but you shouldn't see guys we're not we don't want push-ups like this we're just rotating out like i said if they do that right you'll see those lats lock in immediately um nothing else there uh i would just say so well, let's just go through some of our so simultaneously What's always, we all, we'll always superset perfect push-up with upper back for this reason. So we can start to understand guys that when we're pressing, we're training upper back. We want, I mean, we want our guys to be so tight with their upper backs when we're training, when we're pressing anything, that, that it's like an isometric hold. You know what I mean? Like that, that's what we're talking about. We want, we want like a cement cinder block backside. Um, so when we go, we start off with we're going to go I's, T's, and Y variation superset it with our press so we can really start to get them how, understand how to move their scaps, how to shift their scaps around. Um, now scaps, we talk about joint by joint approach. Scaps, are they a stability or a mobility joint? Stability, right? We want to have stable scaps. We, don't have, we want to have scaps that are winging all over the place. We want to have very stable scaps. That's why we train so many scap pull apart, so many I's, T's, and Y's, so much upper back. We want to have a freaking stable upper back. So as we go through this, <coughs> Before we do anything, we're always going to say what? We say, do what with your scaps? Set them. Set them. Yeah. We say, set your scaps. Okay, so that's the coaching cue that we use with our guys. We want to set our scaps. So it's not just, all right, coach, here we go, I, C's, and Y's. Because if coach is like this, okay, go I, C's, and Y's. Is he training upper back? 
No, absolutely not. So it's not about doing I season wise, it's about how you do I season wise. So for us, before we'll allow to move, right? We'll say, all right, set your steps. And when everybody's in a good set position, we'll start with ISO holds, right? So we're not actually moving yet, we just want to get used to holding. So we're gonna go an ISO hold I. Okay. Now we want as we want biceps on ears is what we're talking about, but these scaps have to be set. If he's just an eye, but these scaps aren't backing down right now, they're not tucked, we're wasting our time. We're not teaching them how to set their scaps. So right now we're just gonna start off with 15 second holds, 20 second hold, 30 second hold, and that's how they'll progress, right? So if we can master this isometric position, we can really teach them how to solidify in the longest leverage part of the position, then they'll be able to do the most relaxed coach. Okay, and like I said, you'll notice, if you just do this yourself, so lay out on a bench, do an eye with your scaps unset, and, and, and feel the difference between that versus when you set your scaps, preset, preload, and then go eye. Massive, massive difference, okay? So we go eyes, wise, we're just making a Y with our body. Okay, same thing, scaps have to be set back and down. Biceps should be right over top of the ears. We want the thumbs up, and we're gonna, like I said, hold that position. That's beautiful right there. Go ahead and relax, coach. Okay, and then we're gonna go T. Now you can do T a, a couple different ways. We go pinkies up, it's just a, it's a, it's gonna differentiate what your main muscle mover is there. So we're gonna go pinkies up here. First thing we're gonna do is what? Set, set your freaking scaps. Okay, set your scaps. We're going T. Ready up? Okay, and same thing. Biggest thing here is you'll see guys start levitating back this way. Keep them up top. We wanna make a perfect T. So we'll all, always kind of tell them to chase their earlobes. You know what I mean? We want palms up by ears. Hey, Coach Owens, palms up by ears. And they kind of understand what that means, all right? So attack their ears. You'll see a lot of guys when they get fatigued, those hands will start going down and back, right? So always want to keep those up by your ears um, so we can really isolate that post delt. Um, any, we're, we're, ICs wise, any questions there? Obviously from there, we'll progress in after ice hold, we'll progress to reps. reps, okay? Should you start this with 10 pound plates in your hands? No, like most people, if you ask them to do a 30 second ISO hold like this, that's gonna blow them up. But everybody wants to grab a 25 pound plate and start trying to do high season wise. Like you don't need them, don't do it. So progression is as they get the movement down. All right, so remember, scat up. Okay, all right, scat pull apart. It can be one of the best exercises. It can be one of the most pointless exercises. If you don't do it right, it doesn't matter, okay? So when we, when we grab, let's just go front and then we'll go back so we can kind of show, all right? So I want to grab the PVC here. I want to grab the, uh, the band right at where my shoulders are. Coach, I want you inside a little more, okay? So I want him to stop, all right? Now, obviously they can't handle this tension and change it, all right? Maybe he just goes one piece of the band, all right? But I want him to get used to being in this position, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna say is set your scaps. So I wanna see him tuck back and down. Then I'm gonna tell him to break the bar because now I'm gonna start really getting him used to understanding what we're gonna teach on the bench press. So you see what he does is what does he create? He creates torque, okay? So I'm teaching him to do that. So now we have tension in the lats, right, coach? All right, when we do a scap pull apart, we're gonna get full range of motion. The coach is gonna pull all the way back. His arms are gonna stay long the entire time. Arms can't bend, right? Okay, he's gonna come all the way back, 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 okay? And then return. Just up top here, I want him back. And that little inch is usually different, right, Coach Owens? Yep. Okay, relax. But if we don't do those the right way, it doesn't matter, okay? Now, just so you see from the back side, all right? He said, kind of watch everything in the shoulder when he sets. All right, hands out, set, break the bar, go. Good, return. See everything come in, go, go. And everything sets in. So like I said, there's scat pull bars can be one of the best exercises we use in develop upper back or it can be a complete freaking waste of time um, if we're not using it the right way. So biggest thing when we're talking about perfect push up and we're talking about upper up back is what? Set the scaps, okay? We talk about posture when we're talking about. We wanna have a neutral posture, right? We wanna teach our guys to be able to brace and produce force with a neutral posture just so we're engaging our core. Understand that in the sport of football, you're not always gonna be able to do everything in a neutral posture position, but when we are pushed with force in different directions, that we can protect our spine. So we wanna to fight to keep a neutral posture as much as we possibly can. But the biggest thing is as you guys move on and you go places, it's not about just doing upper back exercises if you guys aren't set when you're doing them. If you're not doing them in the right way, we're wasting our time. Usually you're using some complete different muscle group than you're even trying to use. So gotta set the scaps, 
essentially important. Like I said, when, and, and some people look at me like I'm idiot when I say this, but you, you press with your upper back. You know what I mean? Like I said, I mean, that's the one thing I took away from Louie when we went there that one time was, you know, your, your upper back is a trampoline to a big bench. Um, and it, 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 if, if you haven't been training upper back, do it for a month and then just see what happens to your bench press. Um, it'll go through the roof. So upper back and, and the, the actual um, push up, are we good there? All right, let's take it to the back now. Ah. All right, so for us, as wide as we're going to go in, and like I said, always understand that not everything is absolute, right? Some guys, I've coached guys with shoulders this wide. Are they going to are they going to bench press the same position as Coach Folks would? No, okay, but for our general template, you know, for our general guy we have come in here, we're going to talk about thumb grip, okay? So we're going to be thumb away from these first neurons when we grab the bar. Go ahead, Coach. All right, now from here, we've been doing push-ups for three straight weeks before a guy can even get to a bar, okay? Now my coaching cues don't change at all, all right? So it's, all right, Coach, we're going to set our scaps. We set our scaps, you see this chest push away from that bench, right? All right, I want you to create torque. You're going to break the bar so like you're breaking the bar, just like you've been doing with your push-ups. All right, we're going to lift straight up, okay? So now we can keep this tension. When he presses, I shouldn't see a gap, right? We've been working that, so now it should be second nature. Going to come down, press the bar straight up, okay? Now, here's a spin on things that we do differently here. And if you don't agree, this is, this is not uh, USA weightlifting. And any, any USA weight coach that is listening to this right now is about to go crazy. But we're not here to create weightlifters. We're here to create football players, okay? What I like, all right, for me, I know one of the things that made the biggest difference for my football career was when I was able to really truly link up the hips hands concept. So I'm talking about when I struck an individual, when I really understood that as my hips, my hands engaged, my hips had to come, hips hands, it changed my life as a blocker, as an engager, as an attacker, okay? So we bench like that, all right? And what I'm saying is I want coach to keep his feet in the ground and I don't want to be a, 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 I don't want to look like a, a C, but I want to see our guys punch through their hips when their bar comes up. Is it strict? No. Is it what they tell you in the USA weightlifting classes? No. Is what they tell you they're wrong? No. It's a different kind of bench. This isn't a strict competition bench press. This is a get you ready to play football bench, okay? So coach will come down. What we're talking about is when he fires up, you want to just see the hips and the hands fire at the same time. Go ahead, coach. Okay? And that's all we're looking for is just a little punch. I don't want to see you do the hyper arch where your ass is way out from the bench, coach. See, I don't want to see that, but I want to see a hip pop. Go ahead, racket coach. I want to see them fire their hips and hands at the same time. Like I said, I understand it's not what, uh, what would pass in a, in a competition bench, but I don't care about a competition bench. I'm not here to chase bench numbers. I'm not here to have the best benchers in America. I'm here to have the guys that can transfer their, their force production on that field. And to me, in my opinion, this is what I see helps the most. It's a natural movement to them. When they link it up, they understand, oh shit, I can produce a lot more force when I connect hips and hands. Um, so obviously, like I said, we, we don't want we we to overuse the, the hip hop where, like I said, you see some of these YouTube videos where guys are freaking, you know, but I, I want to see a hip hop. And, and that's just, like I said, it doesn't make it right, it doesn't make it wrong, but that's how we do things and it's what I believe in for that reason. Now, when I want to really isolate the pec or the shoulder, whatever it may be, obviously when you guys see us do our dumbbell work, or we're on a, like, we'll sometimes we'll do some inclines and we'll keep their asses down where we really just want to isolate up the body. But that's not why we bench here. If you said, hey, Sleeve, why do you guys bench at the University of Akron? I say, because I want them to learn how to fire their hips and hands at the same time and produce a ton of force. Um, so that's our why. Uh, like I said, it, it's definitely not what you'll learn when you take a USAW class. Um, First thing I noticed here is that you guys did that. I was like, Yep. Um, but like I said, that's our why. So you can take it, you can leave it. Like I said, it's not something that I would say you guys have to take away from here. But it's, it's just so you guys make sure you understand our why. Okay. Any questions with the actual pressing stuff? Well, just a comment. Like some of our linemen play their hands inside all the time and have that little bit of rotation. When they go on a football bar, their benches for football bar is harder than right. a straight bar. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, we. We want to make it specific, but yeah, a lot of our offensive linemen who are used to striking like that, like I said, when we, when we put a football bar in their hands, and you see they can actually football bar bench more than they can regular bench, and I'll take that. Like I said, I'm, I, 
do not care about numbers. I do not care about um, being textbook and everything. I want to find what works best for us so our athletes can take what we do in here and transfer over to the field. That is king. That's most important. Um, good there. All right, I just want to go over the chin up because a lot of people don't do the chin up correctly. Um, and once again, like I talk about with the upper back, if you don't do a chin up right, you you know a lot of people end up using biceps way too much than they need. You don't have an isolated yes. lat. So, um, folks, why don't you come up here? Three, All right, so we're gonna teach them. Um, start with chin ups. Why chin ups are great in the reverse hand? What is that? Um, as far as shoulder mobility, coach, what does that mean, for us, Coach Harris? It allows us to get full range of motion, allows that point where you can get stretched out at the top. I mean, the, the, this is the on. largest form of, of shoulder mobility, right? This is going to be easier on the shoulder girdle, easiest on the shoulder girdle. Um, whether you're neutral or whether you're overhand, that's going to cause the most range of motion, the most degree of flexion or of, of rotation in that shoulder girdle. Um, so it's a great way to start getting them more supple. It's a great way to start working some range of motion in that shoulder joint. Uh, so we're always going to start with chin ups. So same thing. I talked about that number of push-ups we have to do for, for bench press, right? Same thing, though. As you guys see, even if they get their push-ups, if they can't do what, we don't allow them to bench press. If they can't do their chin-ups, we don't allow them to bench, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a really, truly owning your body weight to where so everybody, like I said, everybody has to be able to do your, your bigs, have to be able to do 20 um, push-ups, skills 20, or mids 25, skills 30. Chin-ups, the same thing. Skills have to be able to do 30 straight chin-ups. Um, the mids have to be able to do 25 straight chin-ups. And the bigs have to be able to do three sets of 20-second ISO hold at 90 degrees, right? Um, so that, like I said, the reason we do those things is to make sure that our upper back, our lats, and our, our so we, we, we own our body weight, we're ready to press in a safe position, okay? So just real quick, chin-up. The biggest thing is we want to be long, okay? So we want to start off, everything's going to be locked out at all times, all right? When coach goes to chin up, here's where most people make the mistake. They'll bend here first. So you'll see this break. Go ahead and just pull with your bicep, coach, right here. Okay, wrong. All right, what I should see first is should, I should see these scaps elevate and then grow, okay? Back down. So what he's, like I said, it's almost like a reverse shrug. You should see him shrug, reverse shrug, and then chin up. That's perfect, okay? What that does, that just sets these lats up to be activated and to be used. When he pulls from bicep, there's going to be way too much bicep activated, not enough lat. When he goes... Reverse shrug, yep. And that's what we're looking at. We want to see that every rep. Back down and then shrug and then chin, okay? And coach, you feel a world of difference when you do that versus the bicep one, right? Okay, go ahead and relax. Um, we want to see, like I said, I mean, people don't realize this, but core exercise or, or chin ups, massive core exercise. You know, you have to be tight, tight, tight when you're doing a chin up in your core, or else what starts happening? You start freaking swinging, they start rocking. So when we're talking about these chin ups, we want them strict. Like I said, I want them to be able to understand how to use their core, how to brace, how to breathe. We've been going over with the squat with everything we've talked about. Um, but so those are the two main things. Like I said, I'm a big believer in owning your body weight before you can press, before we can, I want to know that we're in a safe position to do so. You know, I don't, like I said, there is no reason in this freaking world we should ever have an injury in this weight room. If we're really doing our job and teaches our kids and put them in great positions, we shouldn't be suffering injuries in this weight room. Um, and I just think that's a great way to to prevent those. You know, maybe like I said, I'm fully confident that if a kid can do 30 strict chin-ups and 30 strict push-ups, he's ready to bench press. Um, and then before we you know, once we can progress in the bench, before they're allowed to bench, you know, our program, our five by fives, our three by threes, they have to be able to bench a certain percent of their body weight 10 times, right? So we really try to cover as much as we can with that for that re reason. All that stuff is for safety purposes. And you know, we can't, I can't say it again enough is high school strength coaches ask me, what should we work on? Get their body weight right first. Like get them, you know, how many kids come here and cannot do a push up, cannot do a chin up and it's out of control. Like what do high school strength coaches need to do better? Stop moving so much weight, stop worrying about chasing numbers and just make, go, go see how many guys on your team if you're a high school coach and if you're watching, how many guys on your team can do 10 strict pushes like we just talked about? And I bet you dudes would be freaking shocked. Go hang your guys from a bar and see how many. I, I know when I was in high school, I could do three chin ups. Three chin ups. And it was like the hardest exercise in the freaking world, right? But you have no upper back development. You know, you, 
have no lap belt development. Every, every, especially males, love the bench, right? And nobody loves the pull. So, um, you know, no, no, no doubt about it. It's just like if if we could imagine if we didn't have to spend these last ten weeks with our guys teaching bodyweight exercise. If they came here and they could do if, if if they were all weaker than hell, but they could all do a bodyweight squat with great technique, a perfect push up, and chin ups. Like imagine where they'd be today versus what we you know what have we been spending the last ten weeks on? Teaching bodyweight movements. You know, we just had everybody moving weight for about the last two weeks now, where everybody's starting to squat, bench, weighted chin ups, so on and so forth. Um, but if that groundwork was already laid when an athlete got here, that's the best thing you can do for them as a high school coach. So, you know, as you guys, the high school coaches you know, you know, I'm sure people reach out to you guys and say, what are you doing? What, what can we do better? Well, there's no posterior chain development at the high school level. And I'm speaking generally. Some high school coaches do a freaking amazing job, but I'm just speaking generally. Um, and there's no body weight development. And that's a, it's a huge freaking issue um, with that stuff. Um, anything else? Anything else with our upper body stuff that I'm missing or questions? Um, what about people like kind of like Woldridge where he can't really like extend his arms out fully? He's kind of like always bowed like that. Yeah. Does that really affect? That would affect well, we, a lot. Yeah. Well, it? so we, we, it comes down to really three things. It's one, there's 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 either weakness, right? So there there's weakness that limits range of motion. Um, there's tightness, muscle tone that limits range of motion, so that they're too tight. Um, or there's anatomical deficiencies. And your job is to figure out which one it is. So if a kid's trying to do an eye and can only get to here, right? Some of them, if you test them, if you put your hands on their hands and tell them to push up against it, if they can do that, then they have the strength, right? Mm -hmm. What do they not have? The... They don't have the motor pattern. Yeah. They, they're they're neur neuromuscularly, they don't know how to get there. They, they can, right? Because all yeah. you, you added a resistance to it and they could do it. Yeah. It's just they can't do it on their own. So the strength is there, but I know the motor pattern's not there. So now I have to create the motor pattern. That's where feeding the monster comes into play, okay? If, if I put my hands there and they still can't push it, the strength isn't there. So I have to develop the strength. I have to develop the, the, neuro, I have to develop the strength and the neuromuscular pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you look at a guy like Woolrich who has, he has a, he, he can't, he anatomically cannot lock his arms up, right? So he has what's called an anatomical disposition. He can't get in those people. Like I said, some guys just aren't meant to squat. Some guys are just not meant to do certain movements. Um, and with him, you know, we'll get it better, but no matter what we do, we can't, unless we go and crack his bones and reset his elbows and his humerus, we can't, we can't make that kid lock his elbows out. Um, so you just have to understand, like, is that kid ever going to be able to safely overhead squat? No, he's not. Yeah. He's not. He's not ever going to be able to get to this position. So I don't want that kid to ever overhead squat any load over like a band, you know. And that's just some guys. That's just how it is. And you can either beat your head in and try to ask God why He didn't create him differently, or you can just find an exercise that works for him. So really, when when we're assessing these things, they really only come down to three things. Like I said, it's, it's either a, a muscular inability, a muscular inhibition thing. It is a range of motion issue. They don't have the the, the ability to get to the range of motion, um, so the neuromuscular issue, uh, or it's like I said, it's anatomical deficiency. So strength, neuromuscular, or anatomical deficiency is what I'm looking at. We can correct neuromuscular, we can correct strength, we can correct the range of motion stuff. Um, we can't correct the anatomical deficiency. That's that's embedded. You know, we can sometimes we can manipulate. We can manipulate the way the femur head sits in the hip capsule. We can partially manipulate the way the humoral head sits in the shoulder capsule but we can't play god yeah another thing with these movements especially like the it's and y's and the chin ups is that it allows you to evaluate those unilateral deficits oh yeah so i mean guys that'll have like one arm up and one arm down you are really able to see those things and then help prevent further injury when they do have weight on them you can, you can you do those, you can tell every player that played baseball, you can pick them out of a freaking lineup. Um, their throwing arm's always gonna be freaking sh and their not their arm's gonna be like this. Yeah. Um, high school quarterbacks, same ways. Um, you, can, you can definitely pick up a ton of stuff. And then we've talked about, I mean, I kind of just mentioned it, but the feeding the monster concept we talked about, that's the same here. Like I said, I mean, it's a, if a, if a folks, can't, folks can't get his arm up past his elbow, if I distract him, say push up against my hand, that's the same thing as feeding the monster. So I'm feeding where he wants to go, same concept. So we'll use that feed the monster concept um, 
to to get there with the push up same thing you can take a band and you can pull their elbows out with the band and really force them to like I said you're creating self-awareness right. you're making them aware of the issue um, you can you can, like I said you can use it in form any form or facet that you want with, with, with that stuff so that's a great way to correct those issues chin ups with over the shoulder banded over the shoulder for the chin ups guys that will pull from their right heavy with their right though I'm just start to lean with it so if you, if you look at it from behind, instead of them just going straight up, they'll start to lean, they'll start to pull more into their trap. So you're just pulling, feeding that side even more, causing them to, to really pull harder that left side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really goes with it. Anything else? All right, well, I mean, as we wrap up, just, you know, obviously it's a four-part series, and I'm excited to get back to – to the, other, to the other stuff and start hopefully you know interviewing some other coaches and getting back some um, some topics but I just think this stuff is so essentially important uh, we we talk about so many other things we talk about off-season training and velocity based training and programming and all this stuff but you, you got to get the basics down so um, once again it's funny because these last four episodes probably are going to be our least watched episodes we have because nobody wants to learn how to teach things or this is boring but this is the essential piece. You guys got to be able to get this stuff down. You got to be able to understand dysfunction. You got to be able to coach dysfunction. Like I said, I, I don't want to hire somebody that comes in here and is just going to scream and yell. You're just a dick with a whistle. You know, I want someone to come in here and coach a clean, can coach a squat, can coach a bench, and can fix problems, be a problem solver. Um, and the biggest thing about these last four episodes is that that's, that's what we're trying to teach you guys to do is, is here are the tools to solve problems. Um, so I can't tell you how important I think these are. Like I said, this is stuff that we use on a daily basis. You guys see it all the time. You know, you see us using these tools all the time and um, these correctives and obviously these techniques. So uh, obviously people probably don't realize how beneficial these these were, but this is, you know, this is bread and butter stuff. So um, like I said, next week we'll kind of get back to the typical forum there and we'll start rolling back to uh, getting some sweet friggin' interviews coming up your guys' way um, with some other coaches, getting some other philosophies and other uh, other stuff. Um, at you guys. So hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys next week.